What's up guys, in this video we're going to talk about the MIPS helmet liners and if they're actually safer or not. So MIPS, if you're not familiar with it, it's basically a liner that goes inside of your helmet. And the idea behind the liner is that your helmet is on top and when you hit the ground then the helmet will rotate instead of your brain taking the rotational mass from that hit. So that's the purpose of this and it's just a thin piece of plastic and actually it's connected to the inside of your helmet with little yellow rubber bands and this is just designed to spin inside the helmet. Some of the MIPS liners that are out there, you have the basic liner, which is one I just showed you already. You actually have pads that will actually rotate a little bit, uh, which is similar to what POC has created with their spin pads, uh, but uh, MIPS also has that design as well now. There's also the spherical design, which is what Jiro uses now, and it's where the helmet is actually like two halves. The top half of the helmet will actually rotate uh, around the bottom half of the helmet. Now, Bontrager has what's called a wave cell, uh, which is basically just kind of a rubberized material on the inside of the helmet uh, that's designed to also give way. I've seen a lot of people out there will actually say, my next helmet's going to have a MIPS liner, no matter what. It's always going to have a MIPS liner. And the reason why most of us say that is because we look at Virginia Tech's star rating uh, system that they have there. They take helmets and they test them, and uh, the MIPS helmets always outperform any other helmet that's out there. Now they don't have any head-to-head -head, like let's say a Laser G1 versus a Laser G1 MIPS on their test. Okay but is the Virginia Tech system the best system to use to decide if a helmet is safe or not? Uh, there are a few issues with the Virginia Tech system. All right, first off, it does not account for any scalp or hair movement. Also, the strap is very tight. If you look at images of it, you can see where the straps are super tight, uh, really attaching the head to the helmet. And I'm not sure who rides with their helmet, uh, you know, with straps this tight on their helmet. Also, the head is not attached to a neck or body. Uh, I don't know about you, but if your head's shooting off after hitting the ground, uh, you have other things to worry about besides just brain damage. Also, they use an 80 grit sandpaper on the actual anvil, uh, and that is supposed to simulate asphalt, which not all impacts actually involve asphalt. So that's going to be the best case scenario of a helmet actually gripping a surface uh, to make it spin. So obviously that's going to skew some of the results. And the best tested helmet on the star rating system is a mountain bike helmet. I don't know many mountain bike helmets that are actually you know used on asphalt, uh, but that helmet's probably going to be used more on dirt or grass or something like that when it hits the ground. Now, I'll be honest, I really appreciate people pushing for more safe helmets. Uh, and that's one of the best things about MIPS, in my opinion. I don't necessarily think it's the best out there, but I do think it's pushing the agenda to have more of a safe helmet and to think outside the box to make, uh, to make helmets safer. There's not many studies out there that will actually compare a MIPS versus a non-MIPS helmet. Uh, with the Virginia Tech star rating system, if you look at their list, there's no regular MIPS and a non-MIPS helmet head-to-head. -head. Now, two of Snell's officers actually decided to do a test themselves, and Specialized actually sent them two helmets to test. One is a non-MIPS, one is a regular MIPS, and they are identical models, just obviously one has the MIPS liner in it. Okay, so two of Snell's officers working in a University of Washington test lab, they dropped a five kilogram guided impactor onto a helmeted hybrid three head form and neck, which is the same head forms they use when they are doing crash tests on cars. Uh, impacting the helmet uh, on both sides to achieve oblique transmission of energy. The MIPS layer was actually activated on each of the impacts uh, and they actually did move. They used both flat and hemispheric impactors and measured both linear and rotational acceleration. They hit each location twice and the helmet straps were tight. I'm not sure if they were as tight as the Virginia Tech study, but they said they were tight. All right, and they chose the locations based on a Harbor View study of the most likely impact locations on bicycle helmets. All right, their testing procedure accounted for the head being attached to a neck and would not freely be detached once impact took place. So what were the results? All right, actually their results was that the MIPS liner did nothing different than a regular lining. 
in some of the tests, uh, they actually saw that the uh, non-MIPS did better than the MIPS when it came to rotational impact. And even at the ASM meeting where they come up with standards for all products throughout the world, I don't know why the bottom bracket guys were not invited to this, but anyway, so you had the two Snell officers are actually there and they were working with MIPS uh, at this meeting to try to come up with a test that they both can agree upon as being fair. Now, one of the members of this group actually calls the MIPS liner snake oil, uh, saying that it's just false. There's no science to back it up whatsoever. Uh, I don't know if I'd go that far. Uh, I think there could be uh, benefit to the MIPS liners in certain situations, uh, but I think it is a very minute advantage, if an advantage at all. Uh, now, what do you think about this? Do you think the MIPS liner is worth it, that we should do it no matter what, or do you think this is just pointless? Anyways, let me know in the comments below. If you've enjoyed this video, be sure to smash that like button. Also, share it with any of your friends, and we'll see you in the next video.